people because they fantasy planning and investigated them. Shall we, my dear? Oh, we shall. You know, and I'm trying to come up with stories that are worth telling or, or songs that ca catch moments or feelings that mean something to me. And evidently, they mean something to somebody else. Otherwise, I still I wouldn't be doing it, would I? Mad man standing by the side of the road you get in somebody's life and they're uh, taking a little part of what your thought with them. And carriage in a beautiful, bright and breezy pop tune, Elvis rants and rages with barbed couplets and incisive digs against everything from Pink Floyd to John Lennon to toxic waste dumps. And that's just the opening track. And if you think that the bug-eyed monster from the planet of revenge and guilt is back, you'd be right. Then again, I suppose if you think about it, he never really went away. Everybody's got your orders. Be a nice girl and kiss the riders. Now the teacher is away. I can remember sort of getting up and punching a wall or something. You know, we used to drink a bit more in those days. And so there was this... You know, it was like everyone was going in exactly the same direction to do to achieve the same job, you know. I mean, the whole level of excitement in the studio, you just knew it was great, you know. You just... There was never any question of doubt about it. Like just about everyone else at the time, I became a huge fan of his early singles. In amongst all the melodic twists, his punk snarl was more real and more articulate than just about any of his contemporaries. And when he wanted to, he could even make his invective sound as lush and poppy as ABBA. We were in buses all the time, so we all used to listen to the same tapes, obviously, in the bus, and we had all these different phases, you know, like we got into ABBA, just from the pop aspect, the fact that they do write great pop songs. We took great pleasure in blowing people to smithereens, you know, like people that we're sort of friends with now. You know, we always had this thing like, we're the best, you're not, you know, about other groups. Elvis is a confusing chap. On an album like Spike, he was able to sing a sweet ballad co-written with Paul McCartney and move straight into a violent piece in which he sang about his desire to tramp the dirt down on Margaret Thatcher's grave. As a lyricist, he's trying to expose a different type of hypocrite in every line. not in power, but I mean, you know, I, I read a, a thing at the weekend that somebody's saying she's been whining piteously in, in American interviews recently, which is the only place where they seemingly take her seriously anymore, even among her own supporters. And uh, here she is sort of bemoaning uh, one of thousands of redundancies and the misery that that caused. And, and now she is whining piteously at the, at the notion that, you know, it's some terrible national tragedy that she lost her job. I mean, I think that's more than a little hypocritical, you know. You get used to songs it all being within a certain sort of band of uh, sincerity or, you know, emotion. You know, there's, it's very rare that it goes either side of, the, of that band. But with him, the, 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 it's a lot more demanding. I mean, he really takes emotions, like, a long way down and a long way up. And I think that's what people like. There's more, more to think about, you know. Elvis Costello, or Declan Aloysius McManus, or whoever he is, is constantly praised for, amongst other things, his uncompromising attitude. But the question, whither Elvis, is a valid one here, I think. How is he going to move his way gracefully into Rock's middle age? Will he take the Vegas route like the other Elvis? Go into seclusion like Bob Dylan did a few times? Or will he engage in endless recycling like Mick Jagger? Or indeed, Carnegie Hall. What do you do? You can't stay the same. I suppose the Rolling Stones have tried to stay the same, you know, but I think he's a bit more interested in the music, you know. 
He's becoming more and more interested in classical music now, you know. He's always got a bag with about eight books in about Mozart. I sort of got to the point where a lot of rock and roll shows, I kind of knew the ending. It was like going to see the same thriller over and over again. And I just thought I'd go and, you know, I listened to, to that music at home. I'd listened to it a lot when I was a kid. And I just started going, and it, and, it, and it became something I started to do more and more. Those who love Elvis will be pleased at the wit, wisdom, and passion that infuse this new album. He is a marvellous rock poet and performer, but is his appeal now mainly for the quality newspaper-reading intelligentsia? For a man in the midst of a business that thrives on constant rejuvenation, is there a slight problem for one who doesn't reach out for new fans? Rock and roll, to my mind, is a kind of music that's defined by certain performers. And uh, those performers have pursued their own style or a, ver a variety of styles in order to express themselves, and that's all I'm doing. I don't, other than that, all these theories, sociological, psychological theories about music are, are all bollocks. So there I was, right, Tom Jones's face, Leary.